Hi, this is Jeff Lang. Um, I've had a bunch of people asking me at gigs about what's going on with my live setup. Um, had people asking me on email and so on as well. So I just thought I'd do a quick video just to run down how I run my rig um, at the gigs. So um, the first question I get asked a lot is, why have you got two inputs on, on the guitar? Or two outputs on the guitar, I guess, more accurately. Why are there two leads coming out of two jacks on your guitars? Well, um, the answer to that is I'm running um, a few different sources in the guitars themselves. Um, first of all, I've got, uh, it's a type of microphone inside there. Um, it's made by a guy named David Wendler from Kansas City. It's called a Dynafield. And the Dynafield is, is what gives it the kind of the life-like kind of representation of the acoustic sound. It's a magnetic coil sensor. Um, haven't seen anything else exactly like it. And um, it's, it's pretty cool. Gets a really accurate picture. If you hear that on its own, uh, running through the, uh, the preamp over here, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is just the... Uh, the internal microphone. So it's very live, you know, gets anything that's that's going on um, acoustically, um, but it's also quite um, relatively immune to feedback. It's not completely immune um, because it is still you know, very live, um, but compared to, I've used external microphones and I've used internal, you know, microphones as well, little condensers and so on. Um, this is the least prone to feedback that I've found that still gets the accuracy. I've used soundboard transducers as well, um, but they sound com comparatively a little bit less accurate, um, if you get what I mean. The next part of, uh, of the sound, the, the sort of acoustic sound, the, where I'm trying to capture the essence of the instrument acoustically, is the sound hole magnetic pickup. Um, I'm using Sunrise pickup. That's in the sound hole there. Um, so on its own, um, if I put that on, on its own through the preamp, you'll hear it sounds more DI'd, a little bit more of a pickup sound. So this is it on its own. So, you know, it's actually not a bad sound on its own, but definitely a lot more of a sterile kind of pickup sound. And the two together is, is the blend that I get at the gig. So. Um, 
Um, so where I go from there, I'll, I'll deal with this extra pickup in a minute. Um, so out of one of the the uh, outputs on the guitar is uh, a stereo cable. So it's we've got TRS cable, tip, ring, sleeve being the three connections. Um, so that one is coming from the microphone and it is going to one channel of this preamp here, which is a Grace Industries Felix. So it goes in with a, a TRS jack, that one there. It also then controls this channel here. And so you've got your input gain, you've got various EQ settings, um, and then at the end you've got the mix between the two, which I set usually about 50-50. Um, the, the other jack coming out of the guitars here is um, another stereo jack, and one side, it's a Y cable basically, one side of the Y cable is that magnetic sound hole pickup. It goes into channel two here, through this jack here, and so it has its own EQ, and that's really handy, so if I'm doing a blend at a show, I can, if, you know, if it needs a bit more bass, you don't want it to start feeding back in the bass, so I can just add low end to the magnetic pickup signal. And it won't take off, you know, the magnetic pickup's pretty immune to feedback problems. So I can get the kind of the blend for each gig as I like it. If the room's a little bit more dead and you can get away with more of the microphone, I can kind of have less of the pickup. If, um, if the room is really live and splashy and needs a little bit more of that dry, direct sound, then I can have a little bit more of the second channel with the pickup in there and, um, and get it to work for each room. So that's the first step. Um, from and that that goes into one one channel of this. This is a a little mixer that Rob Squire at Pro Harmonic Audio in South Australia made for me. Um, so it lets me combine all of the sounds together. It's got a little passive mixing set up, and then it's got one um, gain stage like a microphone preamp just to lift because when you combine them together passively, you lose a little bit of level. So it just bumps that level back up so that it comes into the desk at a good um, level of signal. And so that comes out there, um, handily labeled, guitar out, uh, amazing. Um, got a mute switch on there so I can change guitars without the leads cracking and popping and a ground lift if you need it as well. Um, so that's that. Um, from here, there's a tuner output. So I just run the tuner off. It just gets um, sent the, uh, the sound hole pickup. And then there's also another output that's um, to run an amp. So, you know, for people who want to use a, their own monitor, an acoustic amp or something. So you can actually select whether you want both channels to come out of that output or just one. I've chosen it to be just the second output. It's this one here. So that takes that sound hole pickup and runs it down to the pedal board down here. That comes into um, this one here, which is a, it's a modified Boss line selector pedal. And I use that as my pickup selector. So the other, the other pickup on there, which is this one here, this is a, a Crevo Django Bucker. It's actually made um, for the Gypsy Jazz style guitars. I'll just um, show you closer what it looks like. So I've got that on the guitars um, at a sort of you know bridge position. Because um, what I do with the setup, once it gets down here to the uh, pedal board, is get that acoustic sound and try and get an electric guitar sound coming out of the same instrument. This is something I've been doing at the shows for uh, 20 years or so, a bit more, 20, 22 years, 23 years, something like that. Um, in, you know, it's basically been a similar kind of approach for a lot of years, um, but it's mutated over time. Um, so basically, that bridge position, the Django Bucker, goes into one side of that switch down here. So if it's green, it's seeing the sunrise pick up. If it's the red one there, I'm not sure if you can see that light, um, that's the, the, uh, the Django Bucker. And that comes in, comes in via this Boss um, 
FET amplifier just so I can just trim the treble a little bit and increase a little bit of the low end um, and get the, the level right so it matches. So when it hits the pickup selector, then it goes through, got a little tremolo, got an overdrive here, um, which then goes into uh, a little reverb pedal, got this echo pedal here that I'll get to in a moment, and then uh, an amp simulator, which is the Sans Amp Blonde um, pedal. I was using a electric guitar amp for the overdriven sound for a, a while, but there was a lot of problems with that I found. Like I'd be usually, you know, I'd be sitting it behind me, and especially in smaller rooms, what I found was getting the blend right between the clean and the dirty sound was a problem. I'd be getting the amp where I liked the, the mix for me, and, you know, people at the front table would be getting a face full of overdriven acoustic guitar whenever I bought it on. The sound engineer would have a difficult job getting the blend right, you know, because it would seem like it was, you know, there'd be a lot coming off stage, so we'd have less of it in the PA, so if there was people on the sides, they wouldn't be getting much of the overdrive, all that kind of stuff. So I thought to make it actually easier to get a blend, um, going direct would make it a little bit more like a studio setup where you might have your amplifier off in another room, isolated from the instrument a little bit. Um, and it's, it works well. So, so yeah, with the volume pedal here, um, I can basically bring in as much of the overdrive as I want at any time. So the acoustic sound, the clean sound, um, is always running. And then the overdrive here joins it whenever I feel like it. So. I can have it just without this one on, without the overdrive pedal. Um, it's fairly clean, still a little bit gritty. So I've got the tremolo on so you can kind of hear the overdrive portion. So that's the bridge position, overdriven, and then the other one's a bit um, cleaner. A little bit warmer. So I might, you know, use it like that with um, just a little bit of drive. But if I add this one, then you get the really fat, rich, kind of thick overdriven sound to join in with the clean. So. So that gives me uh, a lot of um, variety in the sound and, and it's pretty versatile. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the overdriven part. Um, what I've got in there with the echo pedal here is I set that one uh, usually to one repeat on a reverse delay setting. So it comes out backwards um, a little bit after each thing I play, it'll come out in reverse. So it's good for that kind of get a bit of live Jimi Hendrix tape reverse stuff going. Yeah. Etc. <laughs> so yeah, that's good fun sometimes to use. Get a bit of psychedelia going. Um, so from the output of the Sans Amp pedal down here. Um, it goes back to this pedal board and comes into, I've got a pair of looping devices here. Um, this one's TC Electronics Ditto X2. Uh, and then this one here is an old Digitech Echo Plus. So, I mean, basically I use these things for atmospheric stuff, really. Um, I don't do anything with looping that's in time. Um, it's basically, a, I was kind of bought into the idea of, of looping by listening to a couple of players. Bill Frizzell does some great stuff with looping where it's an atmospheric thing. And there was a, a guitar player from Tucson uh, named Reiner 
who um, did a bit of atmospheric looping stuff as well. And and I, I, I was intrigued with that. Rather than sort of having it on the floor, using your feet to, you know, to operate these things and, and doing layered up stuff that's in time. Um, you know, lots of people do that and that's cool. It seems a little bit um, obvious and, and an easy trap to sort of get caught by where if, if the looping stuff doesn't work, then you can't do certain songs properly. Whereas this stuff, it's just an extra, an extra little thing. And so that's why I set it up on the little table along with the acoustic preamp. So I have it up here next to me and then I can treat it almost like an instrument. I mean, it's awkward to use, so you have to stop playing to actually use any of this stuff. You know, you have to take at least one hand off the instrument to operate it. Um, so it becomes a decision um, about when you use this instrument rather than just another effect that you're using. Um, and, you know, it, it, again, it's easy to overdo it, so I try not to use it too much. But um, basically, the ditto... I use to do loops where I can kind of depend on certain certain things to to happen. So there, it's got a very handy little switch here that has you can have it go half speed or you can have it go in reverse. So I might, you know, I might record a little sound, you know, just And then just put it down to half speed. It's sort of got an interesting sound to it. Um, I might, um, you know, add a couple of things to that, like. And then make that come out backwards. You know. So that's that one. Um, another thing that I might use that for is I carry these music boxes around. Um, and so I might um, do a bit of a soundscape thing, you know, play these through the pickup here. So. Um. so record a bit of that and then put that in reverse, say. Or um, put it down an octave, which makes it sound a little bit kind of like a Wurlitzer or something. So that's that. This one here, the Digitech Echo Plus. That's um, it's an interesting box here. It can do a few things. Um, so. Um, you've, you can kind of mess with it as, you, as you're going along. Um, a little hard to see in the daylight when it's on. But, um, yeah, you can kind of get some... So it's got an infinite repeat switch. And you can kind of engage that and disengage that to add little sounds to it. So... kind of cut in and out and then you can mess with the time of it yeah. you can even mess with it as you're going along the time <laughs> so you can kind of mess around with that what I like about this one is I might be fiddling with it during the gig, just playing a few things, and I won't know exactly how it's going to come out. So, you know, I might start off a piece with, you know.
So yeah, it's kind of fun to mess around with and just get, you know, get that little bit of the rug getting pulled out from under you because, you know, I might record a few things and then just start it playing back and you have to just kind of deal with what comes out of it because it's not in time and because if you mess with the pitch, you don't know exactly where the pitch of it's going to come out. So you can kind of, you know, you can get all these um, sounds going where you don't know actually what the pitch is even going to be, you know, this little... So yeah, fun little fun little toy to have just there. Like I said, easy to overuse. But um, that's uh, that's basically the way the live setup works. I've got all of the guitars rigged up to to work the same way, so it's uniform. You know, you can plug in each of them and it runs the same way. And you know, you might have to adjust the settings here with the EQ or the levels just to blend each one. But it's pretty straightforward, um, at least to me. I know it's more than what some people carry around but anyway that's the way the setup works thanks for watching